Hi, everyone. I'm Shaheen from The Content Mix, and I'm excited to be hosting our second ever multi-guest interview with Jade Mar Maravillas and Bernardo Lengruber, both based in London and are both from the company Vitex, which is a cloud-based e-commerce platform. Jade is Global Head of Marketing Enablement, and Bernardo is Head of Content. Thanks so much, both of you, for joining us. Thanks for having us, Shaheen. Thank you, Shaheen. So could we, uh, each of you, just like introduce yourselves in your own words? Maybe we could start with Jade. Yeah, hi, I'm Jade Maravillas. I am uh, based in London. I am not from London, as you could probably tell by my accent. Uh, I am originally from the Philippines and I move everywhere. <laughs> um, and I would, now, I would guess you're American by your accent. <laughs> oh, I, I, I hope that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, as yeah, an American every, myself, it's a compliment. Uh, <laughs> I take that as a compliment then. I, I think it's one of those accents that sounds like and it, they say it's like an international school accent. It's like, <laughs> you sound like you could be from the US, but then it's not really American. But anyway, I'll take it as a compliment. Yeah. So yeah, I've, I've, lived, I've lived in a lot of different places. I now live in London with my husband and my two and a half year old daughter. And I've been working at VTAX for um, about a year and a half now. It's gone really quickly. Prior to that, my background's been in, um, well, everything really a lot of it's in technology um, but I have also worked in consumer and in music for a long time actually so I was working in record labels at the midpoint of my career Very cool. I didn't know the music part you did it yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a big chunk of my career and uh, I could I have a lot of stories to tell, but maybe not for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a bit, a bit later. Let's, maybe. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll see. But uh, uh, Bernardo, can yeah, can you introduce yourself as well? Sure, sure. So I'm Bernardo Lengrube. I'm from Brazil, which is actually where Vitex is from too. Mm -hmm. I moved to London last year. Actually, not London. To be fair, I live in St Albans, but we work like the office we have is in London. And uh, I moved during the pandemic, so like really crazy move, life move in general. I came here with my wife. I don't have a two and a half year old daughter. Not uh, yet. <laughs> no, but a lot of plants now in the garden, which is yeah. <laughs> nice. And uh, I've been at VTEC for seven years now. And um, I've seen a lot of, of changes and transformations during these years. And uh, my, back my main background, and especially at VTEC, is with branding. So before leading the, the content team, which is a new team, I was a head of the branding team and, um, and the whole rebranding and positioning and strategy, uh, brand strategy for VTEX. So He's really responsible excited. for all the pink. Yeah. <laughs> My so if you, don't like, if you don't like pink, blame him, but we love pink. <laughs> yeah. Probably if you don't like, love pink, you want to work at VTEX. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's true. But has that always been your brand color? <laughs> No, the, from Vitex. Yeah. No, you were like blue and orange, really boring. Like it was really, really boring. That's the, the rebranding was in 2017, actually. And then a lot of things came afterwards. And one of them was the marketing, right? Mm -hmm. So Vitex grew a lot without without having a marketing position. And that's what, Jay, one year? Like a little after you joined? Almost exactly. Almost exactly one year ago. So fun yeah. fact, as Bernardo said, um, I don't know. I don't think a lot of people have heard about VTEX. Uh, I would be very surprised if they have. But we are a 20-year-old startup. And what that means is that we have been around since the year 2000. Started in Brazil, moved to the rest of Latin America, where we still command quite a good market share there but have now really expanded into the U.S. and into Europe, where that's where, I guess, the whole startup thing comes from. So it's two, two reasons why I say startup. One is because in um, the developed, typical developed markets, we are just starting. We've been here for a couple of years, really making a big play for it, but also startup in terms of our culture. So we are a 20-year-old startup with a 1,000 people spread around the around the world but uh, we thankfully have kept our flat lean organizational structure and um, yeah I, I it's 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 been great and so another startup is that the marketing function at VTEX has been around for less than one year 
So we started at the start of last year's pandemic, um, so March. And prior to that, there was absolutely no one with the title or no team with the term marketing in it. And we've gone from zero people in February of 2020. And now we have, I would say, at least 70 to 80 people with the title marketing. Mm-hmm. So wow. it's been it's been amazing. It's, but, it's been a really nice journey. How were you marketing your services before then? Was it another department responsible for the function of marketing? Bernard, do you want to take that yeah. on? Cause, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. So, <laughs> yeah, so the, the what we call today marketing at Vitek, especially, it was before it was under the sales teams. So it was a really salesy lead generation kind of only focus, you know, uh, without much strategy, without much long term vision, and I th- I think that started to 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 build up, you know, so so that we started seeing from. It was kind of a match, you know, the marketing on that silo kind of not working in the long term and the branding also kind of demanding more awareness, more, you know, this top funnel, top level kind of campaigns and messaging and positioning. And then, you know, now we, we kind of put it all together. And and just in addition to that, and maybe Jade, you can you can help me with this, is that we are we, me and Jade, we are under the marketing enablement uh, function and area, right? So the way it works is each country or region has its own growth uh, team, which is marketing, sales, and CX. And we as enablement, we are not responsible for a country, but we are supporting and and guiding the countries in their own, you know, uh, needs. Mm-hmm. So you're providing a, like resources to the sales teams in all the different markets, right? Exactly. Absolutely. Complementing this strategy for, for, for what they can't or they're not seeing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a very democratic way of doing marketing. Mm-hmm. So uh, we, as I always say, we're not a global marketing team, but we're the closest to a global marketing team at VTEX. So we still give autonomy to the countries to be able to do their own campaigns and um put out their own content and we take the best off so the best practices and share them across the globe really and at the same time we also define the standards of what is good content and what isn't and so we're able to also say that share the best practices from a knowledge perspective so that they are really writing or producing content that will achieve their goals mm-hmm. and uh, for, just a comment on that i think it's uh, it's interesting it's even though we are on, in this kind of uh, meta area, right? Uh, we are l- learning why we're doing, and we are actually doing things. You know, we're not just like supporting and guiding and creating the best practices. We are promoting campaigns. We are building the the, the pieces. You know, we are also uh, uh, um, kind of contributing to to the to the marketing of the company, building the things as we as we grow, right? Mm-hmm. So for context, could you tell us a little bit about like what VTEX actually does? <laughs> in, in so yeah. Briefly considering obviously our audiences aren't your customers, but just to get a general idea <laughs> of kind of, yeah. So I'd like to say that VTEX helps brands, retailers, and businesses keep up with the pace of their anytime, anywhere customer through our integrated commerce, order management, and marketplace platform. And that what, what that really means is that you know, nowadays, it's not enough to undergo digital transformation. Um, it's, 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 not a, it's not a good to do anymore. It's a must do, right? So especially with the acceleration of this with COVID coming in, it, for, for most enterprise businesses, they've already been on the web, right? So it's not saying, yes, go online, although, of course, that is another message that is the base, but it's thinking beyond traditional e-commerce and expanding the horizons of what is possible in that sense. So, you know, are you able to go into new markets as quickly as you should be? Because, you know, time is of the essence. And typically when you talk about monolithic older generation platforms, is that uh, a project usually takes one and a half, two years. And with our technology, um, we are able to reduce that to our average implementation time of 109 days, 
which is pretty pretty quick because if you think about it, it's, it's gone from years to to weeks. And we're not talking about startups or SMEs. We're talking about enterprise enterprises and really big global organizations going through these changes at the maximum time to revenue. And at the same time, another thing that we are really advocating now is the possibilities of being your own marketplace. And so we, we all know the importance of marketplaces today, for instance, uh, being on Amazon. You, you can't be a retail business now and not be on something like an Amazon or eBay. Uh, but the next possibility after that is being your own marketplace. And what we mean by that is being able to expand new business lines and reach more audiences through a network, through your own network of being you being at the center of that marketplace. And you can connect buyers and sellers and also opening up new product lines without actually incurring the risk of taking on that inventory. So that's really, really exciting for us. And we think that technology shouldn't be a barrier to putting the pieces of your business together. So maybe Bernardo, you can share like who's your target audience when it comes to content marketing and who, who are your customers typically? Good, good. So Jade already mentioned the, the, this enterprise uh, brands we work with. And the, the hard part of, of defining the audience was always that we're not attached to a specific industry, for instance, you know, like just grocery or just electronics or just, I don't know, pharma. We have customers in all, all of the segments, right? So that's not a good way to look at it. Also the enterprise level, but we kind of also have uh, what we call tier two and three companies, you know, using the platform. So, so it's not just about the size, right? And recently, we've been to, through a process of exactly that, defining the audience. And we, we kind of mix the persona uh, approach with the job to be done. And we, got, we came up with three definitions, right, of, of audiences for content, as you, as you said. So decision makers, so the people who are there on the C level or, you know, more, more uh, um, directors, et cetera, from, from these enterprises, they are the ones signing the contract, but they're not necessarily using the platform or even sometimes not even seeing a demo. You know, they just need to be convinced that that's the platform. So they are taking uh, making decisions. The second audience would be the project owners, the ones who are actually implementing. They're actually, you know, looking after platforms. They are actually, you know, deeply involved in, in the process. Uh, and the third would be the users, the people who are every day, you know, managing their orders or, you know, managing payment gateways or logistics, etc. Everything you need to uh, for a, a, an e-commerce operation to, to run. Right? So we kind of have these three completely different audiences with completely different daily problems. And we are now starting to kind of segment the contents to each one of them in different channels. So for instance, the decision makers, they won't go out of, all out of their way. You know, even though we would love to, it's not just not the reality, right? They don't, they don't, they won't go out of their way to enter our blog. You know, it's like they read the Financial Times, they read New York Times or whatever, you know, other traditional media outlet. So what we want to do is we want to be there, right? So we want to be uh, featured on that uh, that media that they already read or they already listen to. Um, the project owners, on the other hand, they are like actively looking after solutions, right? They're act actively researching. They're actively um, trying to solve the problems that they live in their daily lives, right, in, in, in work. So they will most likely end up reading an article on our blog or you know, having being friends of someone who is already our customer, and then you know they start talking about it. So it's it's more about creating relevant content from for the questions and the problems they have, uh, and addressing the right channels like you know targeted campaigns or uh, or even organic uh, with the with the blog. And then the users, they are not really. Um, connected to the buying process, right? They are on this, especially on these big enterprises, they can even influence a little bit the process, but they won't, you know, they won't be directly involved with that. So we usually, we communicate with them 
uh, either via the help center, which is a more how-to type of content, um, and also internal communication. So the platform has as an internal area where we can talk directly to them, and you know, intercom or the product marketing team also launch things directly to our users. So it's a more, much more segmented and a specific type of communication. If we're also experimenting with new content ideas to be able mm -hmm. to reach uh, these users. And I won't go into too much detail here because we're still in the process of thinking and doing it. But when that does happen and we see results, we'd love to share that with you. Awesome. Yeah, that would be great. Um, so uh, it sounds like with your with the creation of this new marketing department, like you're putting a lot more emphasis on content marketing. Can you share some of the initiatives that you've launched in, in the past year or so? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I, I, we, I, I mean, we didn't have content before, right? That's that's one thing we have to share because. Uh, as I said earlier, like the, the sales teams were really focused on lead generation, like short term uh, um, communication, if I, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, so we were, we're not producing content. So the, the existence of content in the company is the most successful thing we did last year I, I, in the, and at this beginning of marketing. Right. So one of the things I, I noticed last week, actually, was that we started investing a lot on customer stories, right? So we write customer stories for the blog. We have case studies. We started having spin-offs of customer stories. So dedicated interviews. Now it's written, but we have plans for a podcast on that sense. And, and the, the magic of it, the, the, the really kind of that success metric that no one talks about is that this year for 2021, all countries and all marketing teams have at least one metric related to creating more customer stories. So from a company that didn't have any content from, you know, in after 10 or 11 months working in this area, having everyone bought in, creating more customer stories and put them to the market, that's, I, I would say that's the most successful thing we did in at least on the content perspective, right? Yeah, yeah, that's an impressive change. So I'm curious, like, um, wh why there was such a change and how how there was such a buy-in for this from a company that wasn't investing in content at all, suddenly, like, seeing, like, okay, we really need to double down on this. They saw it was effective. Yeah. They, they saw it was effective from both a lead generation perspective, but also getting closer to their customers and really getting into the reasons why they have bought into us and not just bought our products. Mm -hmm. And so the, you know, 2020 was about establishing this discipline. And now 2021, we've established the discipline. We've gotten, you know, this change. It's kind of like the it's a change management sort of approach to the way that we see content in um, our organization. So now everyone is bought in that, uh, you know, it's, it's part of the country's grade to produce these customer stories and talk about our success through our customer success. Mm -hmm. And this is really, for me at least, um, I, I'm a big proponent of the Simon Sinek start with why sort of approach. I don't know if you've come across that already. I think it's, yeah, it's, it's quite an old, it's, it's an old concept, old in the sense of like the internet, right? It's not that old. <laughs> <laughs> I am a lot older than that, but um, I, let's not talk about my age. It's my birthday on Sunday, so <laughs> it's another, another year older. Um, but going back to what I was saying, uh, the starting with the why and starting with, you know, the intrinsic value that you bring to a customer. It's not, it's great that you can talk about, say, um, you know, the results from a numbers perspective and how you got there from a product or solution perspective. But why do people actually buy your product? It's also because they want to achieve something that is not necessarily tangible from a numbers perspective, that is important, but also, you know, I would like to prove a point in I just joined this company and um, I want to make sure that I leave my legacy with the way that things are running, right? So 
it's getting to the heart of why people buy and then talking about the how and then the what. And it's such a mindset shift. Uh, we're not there yet. We're getting there. We are starting with our team. It's a really painful process. And we, we've been uh, just kind of like a little bit of a tangent, but to relate to what I'm saying, we've been starting to relook into our website messaging. And like a lot of B2B companies, we talk about ourselves. It's easy, right? You can yeah. say that you are the first and the best and you do this and you do that. But what really resonates with their audience is putting them as a protagonist and you as the the guide, like, you know, the, the Yoda to the Luke Skywalker, right? Everyone sees themselves as a Luke, Luke Skywalker in their own lives, right? And so mm-hmm. why would you put yourself as the Luke Skywalker mm-hmm. in that person's life and not have that connection, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So that is really the practice that we're doing, not just from a website perspective, but also in every single piece of content that we're starting to produce as a team now. And hopefully by the end of 2021, maybe even before that, I hope, um, that trickles down into the way that the rest of the organization thinks. Mm-hmm. I was curious, did this uh, emphasis on content, like, was did it start before or after the pandemic started? I think it was around the same. No, well, you know what? Actually, I would say it was before. Mm -hmm. Because it was curious because obviously like now imagine there's limitations on other types of marketing that might have been important before. So it obviously makes sense to emphasize more content and online uh, digital marketing and all that. But I was just curious how how that played into it. If it was something that you were preparing and just was like happened to be <laughs> or I, yeah. I have my I have my stories about that or opinions but Bernardo did you want to touch on that yeah yeah just just one thing I just remembered like we don't talk about that much but Mariano is one of the co-founders of of the company he always had you know this understanding that content was important right so I I, I kind of, you asked that and I I went back to 2015 when I was one year old at the company and he he put some guy in Sao Paulo to start kind of a YouTube channel, right? And that, that's like six years ago, right? And and the idea was amazing. I know, I remember like it was kind of a television show, right? Sat with lights and a table and, you know, professional camera and that type, that type of thing. But to be honest, and 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 a lot of other you know attempts late after that, I think we never got content right. You know, like creating really useful, uh, uh, kind of insightful, generous content, right? So, and and this is also one of the things I I, I believe and I'm, I'm seeing that people get wrong all the time, right? The content we build now, and and we want to build, in, you know, from now on is not sales content. We're not trying to sell you VTEX. We're, we're telling you the amazing things that people that who use VTEX were able to do, right? And this is a completely different approach. And, and we were mentioning before, like the, the, this uh, dependence of marketing under sales creates this kind of uh, friction, right? You, well, my result is I, I have to generate leads. I have to drive, tra- I, I have to drive traffic. I have to you know, deliver more sales in the end. And on our new approach, kind of, we want to generate more conversations, right? We want to get into that uh, project owner mind and, and, and get him talking about what Sony did with Vtex or, you know, how Black & Decker transformed or how, uh, even better, how Vtex was part of Black & Decker transformation, right? We, because, again, we are just one part of the transfer, digital transformation these, these big companies are going through. We are the... The commerce platform, but there's a whole, you know, big change going together, and 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 knowing this and 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 putting ourselves in this place where we can, you know, share the experiences and share this uh, how they overcome their their challenges is much more effective than, um, you know, than oh, Vitex is amazing. You know, we have a, the best OMS in the market, and you know, the conversion rates now is thirty percent higher, and this, you know. People already don't know Vitex. Why they? What would they care about the conversion rate? You know, even though it's a very good number, right? Everyone loves conversion rates, but 
um but that's i i don't know if i deviated a lot but <laughs> <laughs> no definitely super relevant so right. <laughs> yeah, let, no. let me let me add to that so another thing that we have been doing very well as a company is uh, our own branded events so mm. we run the fun fact another fun fact we run the third largest e-commerce event in the world mm. and the largest one in Latin America. So this is called VTEX Day. And uh, in 2019, which was the last year that we had it live, obviously, um, we had Barack Obama as the guest uh, keynote speaker. I mean, why would Barack Obama be, um, you know, a keynote speaker at that e-commerce technology event in Brazil, right? Mm -hmm. But we, it, and that, that sort of approach dictates the way that we have seen content before, but just from a different medium, it was through physical events, which from a Latin American perspective has been, um, you know, the, I guess the, the primary way to do business has always been face-to-face, -face, right? Uh, obviously with the pandemic, everything's going to digital now. Uh, I think from a culture and a mindset perspective, that's also been some, something that accelerated this digital content marketing approach, right? But prior to that, you know, for, for years and years and years, we didn't go into uh, 20, 22,000 attendees at a, a single event from, from like one year, right? So it's been years of building that up. And the central component to those events is the, the content that we have. So throughout the two days of the VTEX Day event, um, attendees are able to join, I would say about 30 or 40 different um, like topics or people talking about certain topics uh, in, in parallel. You have some keynote speakers, but you also have you know, smaller panels, smaller speakers. And this is like the physical embodiment of the way that we used to see content or the way that we see content, right? It's a very community-based type of approach. Um, but obviously with physical now not being in people's vocabulary, we are trying to mimic the way that we have done that from physical events and now going into the digital experience. Absolutely. So yeah, that's, that's a very cool way of thinking about it in terms of the transition. Um, I wanted to ask uh, that, so you're a very global company operating all around the world. So do you work, how do you... Um, create content for all these different geographies? Uh, well, I, I would say we have to, as we are a small team, we have to do a lot of curation, right? So we gather from all teams, like the sales team, the product marketing team, the sales enablement team, everyone kind of drops a lot of brands they, wanna, they want to talk about. Um, and we do this curation. So we have this quarterly planning of what, what is the product launching that will kind of guide the narrative we want to bring to the market. Um, so uh, let's say marketplace or headless, you know, something that kind of gives us this topic that, to work on that we will prioritize over others. So this is one of the ways uh, we create. And there are other two content, uh, two criteria. One is the brand. So if, it is, if it's a global brand that all regions can leverage, amazing, that's, that's top of the list. And, and the second is good results as well, right? So if we have a good brand with good results, and that you know has a, is using the solution we are we want to talk about. That's that's I mean that's gold. <laughs> it doesn't have it doesn't happen always, but you know we usually have at least two of of these uh, uh, points kind of addressed. Mm -hmm. And then the local teams are also creating content, right? So Brazil, for instance, they are creating a lot of content for their customer stories, and we are also looking into these stories and, and kind of globalizing them. So even if it's, if it's a local brand, but you know, it's a very good marketplace case, then we pick that, adapt a little bit and then uh, launch it to other markets. So it's, it's kind of both ways, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, very cool. So I wanna um, ask you both about your recommendations in the, in the interviews. I always like to get people's um, you know, ideas for resources that would be useful for other marketers. Um, so first of all, and either of you can chime in on any of these questions, but like um, just resources for like staying up to date on marketing trends that come to mind. 
All right, I can start off with that. So as I mentioned earlier, um, I'm a, a full-time mom and a full-time working person, <laughs> professional. And uh, as with that, you tend to be very busy. <laughs> So uh, we we value you know the thirst for knowledge in our organization and definitely in our team. So as a team leader myself, um, what I normally do is I in the mornings when I'm doing chores, <laughs> I tend to listen to podcasts or look into really interesting videos or download ebooks. Oh, sorry, not ebooks, audiobooks. And while I'm trying to tidy up or getting my daughter to school, I put my headset on and I'm listening to something, right? Mm-hmm. So it kind of kills two birds with one stone because that's the only way. And the good thing is, is like Bernard and I sit in London where we start a day a little bit earlier than our colleagues in um, Latin America and the US. So we're able to get some studying time or get some listening time in in the mornings. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah. I I kind of hate social media, so I try to keep myself out of it um, a lot. And it used to be a huge source for me, but now I I would say maybe a few newsletters, but more on I I honestly I read more on news, what's happening in the world, and and have a few like there's this guy who writes a very good newsletter on marketing. I can can I send you the name later? Because yeah, yeah, I can add it into the blog post. No worries. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He sends not he's not too much newsletters, but he he kind of curates one thing and goes deeper into it. I I think it's very good. And uh, I I'm I I mean I I use Jade as a curator, so whatever she sent me, I I read or watch or or listen. It's to always it. good content, right? Always good content. Yeah. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, well, any any other resources in terms of like online courses or books or uh, also software tools or apps? <laughs> yeah, so I can start off with that. Um, we, we personally, so I, I would say we, because as Bernardo said, I've um, been sharing a lot with my team, but personally, I, I tend to have certain thought leaders or authors that I go to over and over again. Mm-hmm. Uh, we love Donald Miller. I don't know if you've come across him. Yeah, I have read the story, Brandon. It was coming to mind when you were mentioning about Luke Skywalker. (laughs) Yeah, sorry, sorry, Donald, if you're ever listening, I used one of your references. So there's there's a couple of um, thought leaders that we really respect, a few thought leaders that I really respect. So Donald Miller is one of them. Seth Godin, I think he, like, I'd love to be his best friend. He's so, he's so lovely. Uh, Simon Sinek, as I mentioned earlier. And also... um, For me, what really is the most uh, prolific think tank that has been focused on the importance of, uh, you know, brand and B2B marketing is the B2B Institute. I don't know if you've come across them before, but they're a think tank that's funded by LinkedIn. And every single piece of research and um, article and video that they've come up with has been such a valuable resource for me that I am really taking a lot of what they say, not just by heart, but into the organization myself. And in fact, because I'm such a fan of Donald Miller and the B2B Institute, we are having our marketing kickoff in March and we're getting them both as keynote speakers for our internal event. So I'm really excited to share that those thought leaders that I look up to, that we look up to as a team across the entire organization. Mm-hmm. And by the way, is your event going to be online, I guess, or what's... Yeah, online. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These days. But yeah, definitely have to check out your events. It sounds like you got some really cool people. It's, it's, it's internal. It's internal. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe one day we'll definitely, you know... But the event with Barack Obama was internal? No. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, that was no, a big that, external that was, event. Okay. That was a big <laughs> external event. But for this one, um, this is our, our like internal kickoff that's dedicated to marketing. But we're not just focusing on marketing attendees. We're also opening it up to the other uh, departments, especially from a sales, a partner, and a CX perspective. But we're also inviting other people in product and finance to join us mm-hmm. and really, um, yeah, learn from... learn. 
it's one thing to learn from us. It's kind of, I don't like saying that, but learning from the thought leaders that we really look up to. So that was the whole idea of it. Yeah, that sounds like an amazing opportunity for employees. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, well, so we're, we're getting towards the end of the interview. I did have a question about like productivity hacks. I don't know if you have like a quick one, <laughs> either of you. To- I think yeah. I already mentioned mine, which is basically um, multitasking, listening to audio mm. stuff, podcasts, ebooks, while I'm cleaning the toilet yeah. or putting my... <laughs> daughter out to school <laughs> what about you bernardo yeah i i'm the opposite i'm so i'm i can't multitask so my I agree, you're a man I <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> sorry but it's that? true <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my, my my productivity hack is the opposite so i i read like early this year the um, deep work book from call newport it's it's very good and i started leveraging those three hours i earned when i moved to the uk to do deep work right so so having the mornings without any meetings apart from today of course this is a special event but uh apart from today like i this is how i get productive and get things done because usually the afternoons there are more like meetings and catch-ups and etc so um, I feel like separating my mornings um, to to do work is uh, it's been very productive. <laughs> very cool. So so we're reaching the end of the interview. We just wanted to give you each the chance for some final parting words or parting advice for other marketers in Europe. You can start with Jade. I can start. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so as I said, we are at the start of our journey. We're not content experts yet. I don't think we'll ever get there, even if you're going to be doing this for the next 20 years because the thing about our industry and the way the pace of change of technology is happening and also media consumption right i don't think anyone can really say that they will ever get there if they are then they're lying so um we're it's important to know that we're all at the start of this journey and we really we were super excited to get on to this podcast for us to share this journey with everyone so just you know, like encouraging people that if you're not there yet, it's never too late to start. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. My, for my side, it's just a big shout out for the B2B marketers out there. I, I know it's hard. I know it's it's it lacks benchmark, but uh, I think we have a very good space to work on. Um, so just, uh, just a just shout out. <laughs> All right, great. Well, thank you both so much for sharing your insights with us today on the podcast. <laughs> thank you, Shaheen. Thanks, Shaheen. It was a pleasure. And thanks everybody for listening in. For more perspectives on content marketing in Europe, check out veracontent.com slash mix and keep tuning into the podcast for more interviews with content experts. See you next time. Bye.